the message from you, as I understand it, around AI is being bold but responsible. How difficult does that make your job right now? Well, thanks. It's great to be here. So Google has made a statement that we plan to be both bold and responsible when it comes to this next generation of launches. But it's important to note that Google's been in the AI game for quite some time. We've led on cutting edge research. And in fact, when I first came to Google several years ago, I led the team that drafted and launched Google's AI principles, which really is the blueprint for how we plan to and have approached AI responsibly. We externalized those in 2018 and they have really served as the North Star, both for us and for others in the industry. And the foundation there is really about AI being socially beneficial and being something that helps enable humans and about working as much as we can to reduce any unintentional consequences. Laurie, I'm really interested in your role and what you're working on day to day. How do you bring together all of the really smart people working on the product side with your leaders, with government, with academia, to kind of make sure that whatever happens with BARD or, or other AI-related initiatives, that to your mind it's safe? Well, I was drawn to join Google because I really believe in Google's mission, which is about organizing the world's information and making it universally useful and accessible. My team, Trust and Safety, helps Google stay true to that mission and make sure that anytime you're interacting online, so whether you're searching for information for a school report or buying a present for a friend or looking for directions to a local restaurant, that you can do that in a safe and trusted way. It's an incredibly dynamic space. The work is always evolving. And we take on not just keeping people safe when they're using our products, but some bigger questions too, like around global election integrity or making sure that people in Ukraine have access to high quality information in the wake of the Russian invasion. Therein is the issue of misinformation, of disinformation, something that people are particularly worried about when it comes to large language models and the propensity to spit that out even more. Is that your key concern? Where are the key risks for you? Well, we've had a many years of experience in, in making sure that no matter what Google product you're using, you have access in easy ways to high quality authoritative information. So think about Google search, and I'm gonna use the example of global elections. We wanna make sure that when major elections around the world are taking place, when people wanna find out where to vote and how to vote and what time their polling station opens, you can immediately go to Google search and find that information. So information quality has been at the heart of what we do for a really long time. And this next wave of technologies is no different. We're gonna bring all of that insight and knowledge to bear. We take misinformation and disinformation really seriously. My team develops policies and enforces them around things like medical misinformation, uh, to make sure that users can trust the information that they find in the moments that matter most. What is it, though, that helps with content moderation ultimately? Is it about people? Is it about AI trainers? We've, we've heard much reports about those doing the work out in Kenya for ChatGPT. Or is it actually AI on versus AI using machine learning and the like? Uh, I think it's all of the above. If you use, if you look at Google's AI principles, they really help. It's, we release AI principles and AI practices at the same time. So it starts with how the models are developed and trained and making sure that you're doing that intentionally, thoughtfully, responsibly while you're being bold is what we all work at Google to do. Laurie. I want to give you a specific example, and I, and I appreciate that you know you're focused on what Google's doing. But one of the the things that that has been pointed out about ChatGPT is it generating um, salacious or uh, uh, I, I guess I'm looking for the right word, but I guess worrying content in response. How specifically do you tackle those issues um, in order to keep users safe? I'll just say it's really early days for this technology. And I think we're all learning about what its most beneficial uses are going to be and how to put the right boundaries around it. Um, at Google, we have lots of people working both internally and externally trusted testers to train and to do adversarial testing so that we understand exactly how the products are going to behave and perform. I think this is also a whole of society set of questions. So we, again, externalizing our AI principles, making sure that enterprise customers, and we've done this for many years, really know how to responsibly deploy AI and working with government, civil society stakeholders to make sure that people are really harnessing the benefits here. It's, a, it's an all hands on deck approach.
And yet it's all hands on deck to get this in to the user base as quickly as possible. You can't move but for a headline of another company adopting generative AI within it. Uh, is the Pandora's box open now? Because ultimately we've gone live, you're going live with Bard uh, to a certain extent, and it's in people's hands. How do you stop that therefore? I think we're in the phase where we're really still learning and training and shaping this technology. And it's still, it's important to, to take a bit of a longer view. This is early days and we're going to be learning more about how to use it most beneficially. So yeah. it's, it's still very but, early. But I know you speak as a passionate mother and I speak as a passionate mother too, that my children don't have a long-term view in terms of what they can consume or can't consume that their minds are boggled on one consumption and one consumption alone. Do, do we have that ability to, to break things in this environment? Google's products for a very long time have really been designed with safety, including for children in mind. So we have controls that we build in to products like the Google Assistant, which is an early version of interactive AI that makes sure that when children are, are asking it for information, they're getting the most high quality information that's safe for children that's out there. I think that the potential for everyone in being able to have the type of knowledge at their fingertips that Google search has provided for a long time and that will continue to develop um, is really exciting. I don't know about you, Caroline, but I'm a, I am a mom. But when I was little, I had the World Book Encyclopedias, and that's how I looked up information. It's pretty exciting that I can very quickly work with my children to learn and grow because the world of information is at their fingertips. And I think building in responsible constraints and making sure that parents and kids know how to use this technology well is part of what we see our role in doing. Laurie, you mentioned it earlier, and your remit is actually much broader than just AI, but the war in Ukraine and the issue of disinformation. Can you talk to me about the work that you're doing in that theatre and some of the progress that you've made over the last 12 months? In the wake of the Russian invasion in Ukraine, Google and many others in the industry acted very quickly in recognition that this wasn't just a war that was playing out on the battlefield, it was also a cyber war and an information war. So we very quickly addressed at its root causes of Russian disinformation. And we also made sure really importantly that people on the ground in Ukraine and all over the world had access to high quality information when they most needed it. One thing that Google did is partner with the Ukrainian government to make an air raid app available so that Ukrainians would have some notice when an air raid was coming. We also made sure that at the top of Google search, you're able to find information very quickly and that our maps were as accurate as possible. And this work is ongoing, of course, as the tragic war in Ukraine continues to unfold. Laurie, one thing I wish my children could type in and search and I could highlight for them is the wealth of female leadership that there is at certain businesses, whether across finance, business, and technology. And unfortunately, the numbers are still pretty rubbish, to be perfectly frank. When you're seeing particularly female leadership at your company, at others, taking a step back at the moment and it suddenly feels all at once, how do you feel as a woman in leadership at this particular moment? Well, I'll say that Google's been a really terrific place for me to grow my own career. And that's partly because I've had incredible female mentors. Susan Wojcicki, who you mentioned earlier, Ruth Porat, many others. But we also think a lot about pipeline at Google. And so many of our up and coming leaders are women. The leaders of search, of assistant, of Google workspace are all women. And it creates an incredibly dynamic environment. The way that we think about this and talk about this on my team, at least, is that Diversity and having people from different backgrounds is not a nice to have for us because we are shaping the next generation of technology for everyone. And so we have to reflect the world that we serve. And so we invest a lot in recruiting, retaining, promoting, and making sure that my team and our company is a place where women can flourish. I've certainly benefited from a really terrific environment there. And there's, I'm really glad we're having this conversation because it's incredibly important to stay focused on it.